Hi everybody, welcome to another installment of Conversations in Wire with me, your host, James Browning. I am a sales representative for the SoftFlex company. We are a uh, jewelry wire manufacturer based in Sonoma, California, and we also have a beautiful gallery that's open every Wednesday and Thursday, and we would love to see you stop by. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to be working on a wire wrapping technique. So it's a little different because we're not doing necessarily a single jewelry piece, but I'm showing you a technique to use in different options. So, um, for example, I made this little snake. Uh, let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Um, the video is going to be on how to make the wrapping here so i'll show you how to do that and you can use this on multiple different product projects like um, wrapping a bezel uh, stone or using it on a cabochon or i've even used it to make a cute little ring so um, it's a very simple wrap so it's good to start simple and then we will explore harder wraps as we go forward so let's go ahead and get started all right so we've got everything set up i think um, so for today's project, um, we're going to be using wire that um, is bigger than I used on this project. This project I used uh, 20 gauge here and 26 gauge for the wrap. So because it's a little small, we're going to do it a little bigger so we can maybe see it a little better. So I'm using bare copper and the reason I like bare copper is because you actually have the opportunity to patina it later. Um, there is a compound called liver of sulfur, and I will actually going uh, to show you how to use that in a future video once we've gotten a couple of really nice wraps under our belt. So today we're going to use 20 gauge bare copper and 24 gauge bare copper. So the base wire needs to be at least two gauges more than the wrap wire so you get a nice contrast with the two different wires all right so because we're not actually making a real project we're not really going to worry about how much wire we're going to take out but for me this time i'm going to take out about 12 inches and this is our 20 gauge. Remember when you're cutting, hold on to your wires so they don't go flying everywhere. And then make sure you put your little cover back on because the wires will fling out and you will have an empty spool once it is all done and that is not fun. Okay, so um, I really like to take a pair of pliers, you can take any pliers that you have, this happens to be chinos, and then take some nylon jaw tools. Um, these are perfect for um, straightening wires. And we want to make sure that all of our kinks from being on the spool or being wrapped or wound are taken out. So I'm just going to take the nylon jaw tools and just go through it a couple of times just to make sure that the wire is free of bumps and kinks. I mean, there's a little bit at the end, but we can deal with that, that's no problem. All right, so actual tools that we're going to need today um, is really just a pair of pliers, nylon jaw tools, maybe some round nose if you want to play around with the ends, and of course, some snips or cutters. Um, the tools that we carry here at SoftFlex, we actually have a beginner wire kit tool that you can get all of those um, in one spot. And it comes with some 22 gauge wire, so it's great for starting. So I'm going to take this short piece of wire that I cut and I'm just gonna fold it in half a little bit. See, I'm not going all the way down, but I do have a nice halfway mark. All right. Now, this is where you can get creative. I'm gonna try and make another snake. So I'm just going to bend out my wires and make a little snake head. I'm just taking my nail and kind of curving it around so I get like a little 
little junction there. All right. Now, what we really want to achieve when we're doing these wraps is that our wires need to be parallel. So what I'm going to do, see where they cross there? I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to bend at a 90 degree angle. And now I'm going to go right next to it and bend it back. And then you can fiddle with these wires to get them where you want to be. I didn't do a very good job. So I'm going to just kind of open this up. Bend it down a little bit so that my wires are next to each other. I may have a funky shaped snake head now, but it's my snake head and that's the most important. Remember, as always, these are your projects. So don't stress about what they look like. Just enjoy the process. And in the end, you'll be surprised at what you come up with. All right, so now we're going to get out a length of this 24 gauge wire. And when I say length, I say length. So I'm looking at maybe, I think 24 inches is probably a really comfortable spot to stop at because you don't want too, too much because they get kinked really easy uh, when you're trying to work it. But you don't want too little because you'll be starting over all the time. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before with this wire. I'm going to grab it at one end, take my nylon jaw tools, and smooth out my wire. Now, uh, smoothing your wire like this or pulling it through the nylon jaw tools uh, does work harden the smaller wires. So you want to make sure that you're not doing it too much. So don't keep going through or else you'll have a very stiff wire. And when wrapping, we really want our wires to be as close to dead soft as we can get. And that off the spool is dead soft. All right. So first step, I'm just going to lay my wire over. Maybe like about an inch tail. No big deal. I'm just going to wrap it around. What I'm doing is I'm trying to ca capture these two wires and kind of keep uh, our wires where we want them to be. I'm just going to take a moment, straighten out everything, and I'm going to squish down those two. Now we can unwrap those later and fix it, but we want something to hold on to when we start to wrap. All right. You know what? We're going to loosen this up a little bit because I want to have a little bit of space. And actually, I have a tool I just remembered is really, really, really helpful when you're doing wire wrapping. This. This is just a standard spring clamp. It's really strong, so it's good for like hand exercises as well. But this is a great tool to hold on to your wire when you are trying to wrap it. So I'm going to pull out those kinks really quick. See? Magic. All right. So one of the things that we want when we're doing wraps is we want to make sure that our wires are parallel, but not necessarily super close together or else we won't have a visible wrap. It's be like kind of bunched up. So this is where these clamps come in handy because they'll keep it so that the wires are not going to move closer together. All right, so I'm just going to hold on to this wire here. I'm just going to wrap it a couple of times. Okay. All right. So now we have some wires. And you can take your nylon jaw tools and snap those straight as well. All right. 
So, this is a, only one style of wrap. There are so many, they're like, um, like knitting or crocheting, how there are so many different stitches. This can be considered a wire wrap stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and our wire is going to start from the front. Let's see. Actually, that's kind of helpful if we split those out like that. All right, let's see if we can get this to focus for me. There we go. All right. Oh, it's not very helpful, is it? Maybe down. Okay. So we're going to take it around the back and we're going to thread it between the two. And we're just going to tuck tuck that in. And we're going to bring it back up. And we're going to go down all the way behind it. And then we're going to go between. So basically, what we've done is made two little wraps there. Okay. And then we're going to go up and across the two. So the pattern is one on top one on bottom, and one all the way around both. Okay, so let's see. Because this is where I get messed up all the time, so you have to watch this. Since we went all the way around, we want to continue around, but that would mean we would wrap the bottom, but we want to wrap the top. So we take it, we go back through the middle again. And when wrapping, you want to make sure that you're not whipping this wire around you're taking it one stitch at a time so back around the back back up the front through the middle and i take my fingernail and i just kind of shove that little knot there okay back around the back back across the first two okay and what helps is you can take your wire and make it go the direction that you're planning on going, but you don't have to continue. So we went around the front, around the back, and we're slipping between those two again, back up, back around, up to the front. This is where I'm saying you can train your wire to go where you want. But we're not going to go all the way across. We're going to go right through the middle again. And we're taking our fingers squishing our stitches together so they're nice and neat. Okay, so let's keep going. Around the front, around the back, through the middle, On the top, around the back, through the middle. Okay. Cinch down those two loops. And then back up around the front. So basically it's three loops. We have the first one around the top wire. Second one goes around the bottom wire. Let's make sure they're nice and cinched together. And the third one goes around both wires. Okay. Now the good thing about this little clampy thing is that you can readjust and you can move that up so that you've got less wire to bend around like this when you're pulling on your knot. So. Let's see, we just did around both. This is how you check, make sure where you're at. So we just have around both. So that means the next one is around the top. So we have to go down through the middle, around the top, and then around the middle. So that makes our around the bottom wire, and then around both wires. Okay. How's that looking? 
so small it's hard to see, but you can kind of see how you've got three stitches around both, around the top, around the bottom, around both. All right. So we're going through the middle again because we just went around both. So now we went around the top. And we're going to go into the middle so we complete our around the bottom. Cinching our little things up each stitch. And of course when you get used to the stitch, you'll be able to go a little faster. But please remember that the faster you work, the less careful that you are, and the more probability that your wire is going to snap on you. Because we are working this wire quite a bit, and we want to make sure that we're gentle with it. So don't whip it around. Try not to kink it too much. So around the top. Around the bottom, through the middle, around both. Now sometimes that around both can be a little loose. If you do find that your, your wraps are loose, you can grab your piece carefully with some pliers so that it's not moving at all. And you can tug on that wire gently but firmly and then make that loop tighter. And that works for all loops. Just be careful when you're working these that you don't sprain your other lead wires out. Because we want, we want to keep those together through the whole stitch, through the whole project, as evenly as we can. So if it get bumpy, kind of take your wire tools, your nylon jaw tools, and give them a quick cinch like that. All right. We're going to do just a few more. We're going to call it a day. And then I would like to start seeing what you guys are making. See how I did that? I didn't give myself enough room to go through, so I'm gonna fix that. Going back in. Oh, see, here's one of those things I'm talking about. And this is happening because I left too much lead. So I'm gonna just move that up a little. I'm gonna take my wire. Actually, let's move this out so I have room for my pliers. So I'm holding on to this really tight. And I'm just going to pull my wire. Let's take it out, pull it, and then go through again. There we go. Nice and cinched up. And around both. Now see, if you are looking at this, if it'll focus, come on. I know there's a way to do this. There it goes. Somewhat. Um, if you look at your stitches, you can tell where some of them may have gotten loose or um, out of whack. Another thing you can do is take your pliers and scooch. So this is good to have snug down as close as you can and then take your wires and kind of press down see so now now we've got even stitches again okay all right just because this is a fun stitch and i love doing it i'm going to do this one more time so We've ended with the all the way around wrap. So that means next is through the middle, that's right. Okay, and then back around the top and back up. So now we're going to go through the middle to do the bottom wrap. Cinching it up as we go. 
and then back all the way around both. Okay. I think we've got a great start. You know what? Let's make this the tiniest snake in the world. So to end this, what I like to do is just give myself a couple of wraps. Um, I think I said before that wrapping three times is a great way to secure your wire because they tend not to unravel after three. All right. So then we're just going to cut off our excess. Let's, actually, let's rewrap the head here. One, two, three. Just to make sure that it's nice looking, because that is the end goal of all of our jewelry processes, I would hope. Okay, all right, so now we've got a nice wrap on both ends. And we'll take our snips and snip it as close as we can. Oh, see how that flew off? That's bad. That was not a good teaching moment. All right. Okay, now we're going to take our pliers and we're just going to burnish the end in here to make sure that it is not poking out. And you can kind of test it by running your finger on it. If it still feels like it's poking out, just squeeze it a couple more times and the the goal is to take that point and kind of wrap it around. So we take it and we squeeze and we turn on this end. You can see it. Squeeze it down a little. All right, so we're gonna stop playing with that. Now, the cool thing about this wire wrap is that it actually changes its composition when you take it across curves. So the straight, you know, is obviously a nice little pattern, but then when you take it around, it opens up that pattern and becomes, you know, a different focus. It's kind of cool. I like it anyway. And there are a lot of different stitches that allow that to happen. So if you see the end of my snake here, I just take a little curl there to tuck in the wires. So I'm going to snip off, I would say, leave maybe half an inch. And then take our round nose. I'm gonna separate these out a little so you can get them. And then just curve it around. And then I also like to take my players and make sure that those ends are tucked in so that they're not going to catch on anything either. There we go. That is the smallest little snake in the world. With a gigantic head. <laughs> All right. But we really were just trying to make that wrap. And it should look approximately the same on both sides because of the nature of the wrap. But there it is. All right. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I enjoyed myself. I hope you did too. If you ever have any questions or comments, please, please feel free to put them in the comment section. Um, or you can contact me at james at softlexcompany.com if you ever have any questions. All right. Well, thanks for coming along with me today and have a great afternoon.